so thankful for his presence, for his goodness and his mercy. Thankful to see each one of you in this building this morning. I want to start, I don't, I don't really know exactly which road I'm going to travel down and preaching to you this morning for sure. But I want to start with the fact that the enemy is still a liar. I don't care what, what, he's, what kind of picture he's tried to paint. I don't care what kind of things that he keeps throwing up in front of your face. It seems like in my mind I saw people this morning as we were worshiping and you could tell I was nervous and pacing back and forth but I kept seeing people and up in front of their face the devil would have a list of the things that he would bring up and throw up in their face. But I want to tell you something this morning. The Lord is able to take care of that list for you. And I want, to, I want to make a statement this morning. If you keep going through the same cycle of where you think you ain't good enough and the devil tells you you ain't good enough and that the Lord don't care anymore, I want you to join with me this morning in telling the devil he's a liar. He's a liar. And the grace of God is sufficient for your life today. Say amen. How many of you going to pray for me for just a few minutes here? I want you to pray and ask the Lord to help me. Like I said, I'm, uh, I'm kind of betwixt in between this morning trying to hear the Spirit of the Lord, what He'd have me to say. So let's bow our heads together and everybody pray with me as we uh, look into the Word. Father, we thank you, Lord, for uh, your goodness and mercy. Come on, help me pray, folks. We, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be in your house. I pray that you'd help us now for the next few minutes, Lord, that we'd be obedient, we'd be sensitive to your Spirit, and you'd help us, Lord, to hear from heaven. God, what you'd have to say to us this morning, and I pray that uh, people's lives would be changed, their hearts would be touched, and God, you'd reach down in their hearts and lives, God, the, the ones that stand in need, Lord, that you'd strengthen them, give them grace and give them courage, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Help us all, God, that we'd receive uh, through the Spirit today and by your word, and we'll be careful to give you praise, for it's in Jesus' name we ask. And everybody in the house said, Amen. Romans 8 and 14. The scripture said, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You and I sitting in this building today in this church service have the opportunity, you and I do, to live our lives and, and live them out as sons and daughters of God. If God is leading you, or if I say it a different way, if you are being led, it testifies to your adoption. How many of you are glad that you can be adopted into the family of God? I submit to you today that God can be leading, but we're not being led. However, when He's leading, and when you're letting Him lead, that's a good indication that you're a child of God. Romans 8 and 15 said, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. From this verse we understand that we absolutely, somebody help me in here, we did not receive the bondage in our adoption. But we received the power to call on our Father and say, Abba, Father, I'm your child. Somebody help me and understand and help me praise the Lord. If you know you're a child of God, if you know He's leading you, come on, help me. If you know you're a child of God, and I just want to give the devil another black eye. If there's somebody in this building today and you're doubting where you're a child of God or whether God wants you to be His child, He does. He does. I want to stop right here. It don't matter how many mistakes you've made. I made a statement yesterday. There comes a time in everybody's life under the sound of my voice that you need ministering to. There comes a time when you need help. There comes a time when you need to know God is for you and not against you. There comes a time when you need to understand that there's no roads you've been down that God ain't already traveled. Somebody help me praise Him if you know God's on your side today. I'll stop right here and go back to a time in my life when I needed ministering to and somebody reached out to me and tell you that I thank God because there is ministry for whatever need you might be going through. Somebody say amen. amen. Lift up your hands and praise Him. Lift up your hands and praise Him. Come on, lift up your hands and praise Him. 
if you know there's something for you in this service today. Listen, I didn't come here just for another gathering. I come here for God to touch somebody. Lift up your hands and praise Him if you know God's able to touch somebody in this building today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Help me pray, y'all. Hallelujah. I watched a movie, a Christian movie, the, 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 the Chosen. I don't know how many of you followed it and watched it. I watched one of the episodes the other night. Mary Magdalene, the Bible said, Mary Magdalene, and there were seven devils cast out of her. And the depiction of the movie showed her lapsing or returning to her uh, former ways. And then she came back into Jesus' presence, and he's standing there, and she's ashamed. She can't even look at him. She's heartbroken. She feels guilty. Somebody help me pray in here. She feels guilty. She's heartbroken. She's ashamed, Dan. She's standing before the Master. She can't even make eye contact with Him. And Jesus says in the, in the, in the episode, He looks at her and said, Look at me, Mary. She finally raises her head and looks at Him. And He says this. And it was so profound to me, Beverly. It was so real. He looked at her eye to eye and He said, It's over. And so she said, what can I do to make this right? And he stops her in her tracks and said, it's over. I've come to preach to somebody today what you're trying to do to get back to him. It's over. Quit trying to do what he's done for you and believe that God's made a way for you. Come on, say amen. I, I come to church that night. I got saved and I didn't have nothing to offer, but I looked up and saw Jesus. And he said to me, it's over. Because first we understand we didn't receive bondage. But what we have received is adoption by the Spirit. And although in spirit and by spirit, it's a family structure that we're in. Somebody say, I've got a father. Hallelujah. We're all family. Turn around look at your neighbor and say, you're kin to me. Hallelujah. Come on, you may not want to admit it. You may not like the fact that you're my kinfolk, but listen, we got the same father. Come on, y'all help me this morning. How many of you know we've all been adopted into the same family? Woo! Glory to God. And how many of you know one day after a while, flesh and blood's going to turn loose, we're going to go to a place, we're going to live together forever, and God's going to be our father, and he's going to wipe away every tear from our eye. Hallelujah to God. Brad had me to grab his hand and walk him around the front of the building this morning. That may be, that may be new to some of you. You may not understand that. But my brother and his wife and their family lost a dear loved one this past week. And how many of you know there comes a time when you need to know, when you feel alone, you need to know you got a father. You need to know you got somebody, you got family to help. Somebody help me, praise the Lord. If you know you got a family to help you. Here to tell you today, the Lord's trying to speak to somebody and tell you that it's over. God's going to see you through what you've been dealing with. Somebody lift up hands and give Him praise. Come on, give Him praise, everybody. I'll say this, and I think I've said it before two or three times over the years. Your future's bright. You hear me? Your future is bright. Because the glory of God's waiting on us. <laughs> it happens. It happens through the dying and death of the flesh and then the experience of the resurrection and life of God in our life. There'll come a time because of our Father when we'll enter into that eternal land. Glory is just on the other side. Say amen, everybody. I want to I ask the church to stand with me this morning. I'm through preaching. I'm going to quit right here. I want to give an altar call this morning to those in the house that the Spirit of the Lord may have spoke to you and you've been dealing with this and dealing with that and you've got this kind of trouble and you've got this kind of going on, whatever's going on in your mind and the Lord has spoken to you and said it's over. The altar's open. Would you come right now? Brad, would you come? Get ready. Here comes one. Quick to move out. Anybody else just say, I'm coming. The Lord spoke to you and said it's over. Here comes another one. 
It's over. Hallelujah to God. Anybody else? Anybody else say, I'm believing what the Lord spoke. It's over. I'm not going to struggle that again. Somebody help me. Anybody else need to pray? Anybody else need to pray? Come on. Come on, don't wait. Here comes another one. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Anybody else ready for freedom? Anybody else ready for adoption? Living in the family structure? Knowing that your daddy cares? Knowing that your daddy loves you? Anybody else? Anybody else? Come on. Come on, don't wait. If you need God, come on. Hallelujah. Come on, brothers and sisters that pray. Come on, gather in behind these. Come on and pray with me. Come on now. Come on, prayer warriors. Father, in the name of Jesus.